Okay, hi everyone. To start off, can I call upon the Prime Minister to restate the motion we're debating? Okay, first an info slide. The info slide states, Academic streaming refers to the practice of separating students into classes based on their intellectual or academic ability, as opposed to separating students based on age. The motion states, This House supports academic streaming. Okay, to start off, we call this House to order. Can I call upon the Prime Minister to give us a speech not exceeding five minutes? Madam Speaker, in a world where students are separated based on age into classes, we tell you that is an unfair system that, that, discriminate, that discriminalizes against students who are unable to adapt into that class, whether it is too easy or too hard for them. On that basis, I'm so proud to propose. A couple things I want to do for you in my speech then. First, a model on what this house is going to look like under our side of the house. Then, two points. First one, on how we've better fulfilled the role of a school. And two, how we get better efficiency within a school. And I'll go on to some other points after that. Let's go on to first a, a piece of characterization. Who are the students that we're going to be talking about in this round? We're talking about the students are going to be unique. That is to say that not everybody learns at the exact same level. These people have all have their different strengths and weaknesses, which means that some students are going to be better at physics, while other students are more proficient at English. Then I want to move on to my first point then. How do we better fulfill the role of a school? First of all, let's talk about framing. What is the problem that happens in the status quo? The problem is students are struggling in class or they're, if to, or they're too accelerated in class and you feel bored within the classroom. This is because this, this leads to a couple problems. First of all, they might be unable to learn anything because the class is too hard or two, they're not reaching their full potential because they feel extremely not challenged in the class, such as like some students who are more accelerated in math forced to take a, a math class of a lower level. Recognize that we, we understand that opposition has a certain amount of ability to say that, yes, people can stay a grader or people can jump ahead of grade, but realize that that is extremely limited in its scope and ability because oftentimes students only struggle with one or two specific classes. On the R side of the house, you're better able to accelerate in one or two specific classes or get, get, uh, get extra help from teachers in like geography, for example, if you're struggling with that and go down to a lower level, which means that our side of the house is better able to adapt the system towards the students Second of all, the idea is basically that our side of the house is just more individually focused. How does this fix the problem? First of all, students are generally just more flexible in their course choice and in their ability to, to choose what classes to go to. That is to say that schools are better able to first fulfill their purpose as an educational facility, which we tell you is, is in the case of like a STEM-focused student able to spend more time on what they're passionate about, such as physics and chemistry, rather than taking the same level of English or same level of French as another student going through the educational system. Ultimately, this is just going to, this is just going to like uh, essentially students with diverse learning needs can better take advantage of the system as a whole because POI. yeah sure POI. So for your streaming, are you like gonna make them drop down the grade for like the courses? Okay, I'll explain the idea of streaming a little bit more. Essentially, students are basically asked to take a standardized testing when they first enter school. After they enter school and they take that standardized testing, they're placed at a level within the school. Then, if they want to accelerate to a higher level, they can choose to take that, uh, that, that, that standardized test again. Or, if they do poorly in a class, then the teacher can recommend them to take the class again. Then, the second, then I want to talk about the impacts of this. I think the impacts are quite obvious. Students feel a, lot, a, a better sense of belonging within the classroom because they're learning at their, very, at their level. I think this is quite in, intuitive. But just to explain this a little bit further, advanced learners of a faster pace, some advanced learners can learn at a faster pace and they can learn within these faster pace classes, while other students who need additional support can learn within these uh, uh, classes that offer more additional support where students are at a similar level. This leads to a couple of impacts. One, it just leads to an overall improved academic success. So because rather than me staying in AP Physics and like not understanding anything that Dr. Ahuja talks about, at least I can understand better in like normal physics where Mr. McGinnis is explaining the concepts. The second idea is that you have mental well-being for the students because I don't have to struggle with fulfilling like a deadline of a homework in which I have no idea to do. Rather, I can just stay in a class in which I understand what the teacher is actually talking about. So you're better able to have you have, you're able to have better learning. The second one I want to talk about is this idea of a better efficiency in a school. Because you realize that there's a problem in the in the, in the current school system. Teachers often have to spend a large amount of time accommodating students of different levels. This can come this can come in two different shapes and forms. One. There can be some students who slows down the class because they need extra help, or some students who are like who are super advanced and are able to like uh, are able to like like basically understand a lot of things. 
So you have two problems. One is that these students slow down the rest of the class because the teacher has to spend time on them. Or two, some of these students are not getting the help that they actually need. We tell that this is bad in both scenarios. How does this, how does this motion solve the problem though? This system basically allows, us to, allows the teacher to teach students in a class of a similar level. Because if students are, uh, are, based, uh, are, are, are arranged based on merit and based on their academic ability, then everybody in a singular classroom is going to be at a similar level. This allows the teacher to teach a class on a broader level. They're better able to adapt to everyone's needs. Everybody's able to understand what the curricul uh, curriculum is talking about. This creates less stress for the teachers, as well as a better learning environment for the students. So ultimately, what have I told you in my, in my speech today? I've given you the model on how this is likely going to look with students taking, an, uh, taking a standardized testing. Two, I explained to you the idea of what the problem is within schools regarding teachers as well as students and how this motion solves the problem. On that basis, I'm so proud to propose. Okay, we thank that speaker for that speech. Can I call upon the leader of opposition to provide his five minute address? Okay, let's start in three, two, one. Speaker, academic streaming does not increase academic development as a whole or the school system. In my speech today, I'll do three things. First, I'll refute all of government branch and then introduce three new points for our team and then I'll impact their argument. Uh, first, on two points, one on inequality and bias within the school system, and two on how this worse education as a whole. So first, on this uh, point on inequality and bias. And inequality in who gets into said programs and what happens afterwards. Usually lots of resources are needed to get into these programs based on the standardized testing model. Because of the fact that these standardized tests for these higher programs are probably going to be more difficult, people who have the resources to prepare for these are more likely to be the people who get into them in the first place. This means that people who do not have the resources for these are going to thereby be put into classes which are inherently worse and in lower like categories in comparison. Um, for example, parents signing up for extra tutoring or talking to teachers about what the program entails. This is not accessible to people of lower economic status and those who may not be able to access these higher forms of tutoring and have access to, life. to these standardized tests. Yeah, I'll take that to your Separation of level already exists in a status quo. People can afford tutoring. We're just saying that if you're unable to be at that level, then you should drop down to a lower level. Would you not agree? While this is true, I'll explain why it's the case that these lower levels are more likely to receive like inadequate funding and when they like end up graduating from the school, like the disparity in the overall average will increase because now you're compared to people who got into these higher programs and you have like significantly lower grades and are in lower programs, which is overall bad. So like why are these people who are not likely to be able to get in like more ex like more likely not to be able to break out and go into these higher classes later. Well, the classes who are lower in nature probably won't receive as much focus because it's viewed that these students are like less like academically like interested, less academic rigor, and therefore the amount of resources, the amount of like school focus in these areas will decrease. Um, and it's unlikely then that these students will be able to break out because now the resources placed upon them and the expectations placed upon them are decreased, meaning the students' bar is also decreased, meaning they're less likely mentally to want to go into a higher program and have the resources to do so in the first place due to like less challenging force coursework, less engagement, and less resources. This is further like enforced due to the sti like stigmatization of these students, because now people who are like lower, in higher grades but are in lower classes, are more likely to be stigmatized and seen as lower, meaning they're less likely to want to strive for higher classes, and those who are in higher levels will be pressured by their peers, teachers, and parents as well, parents the major one, to stay in these classes even though that's not what they're interested in. This kind of ties into my second point about how this creates worse education as a whole because now these students won't be able to diversify and like want to have different classes and different opportunities because now these students are forced to commit to a course at a very early stage. While government said that like yes people can take like these standardized tests later on, 
like people early on would likely be placed into a class and stay there because of two things one the stigma that comes with the class two like pressures that come with the class if you get into this higher class your peers your parents would likely force you to stay here even if that's not what you want meaning if you got into a high math program but in like grade 10 it's really tough you're likely to stay there even though that's not what you want and for people in these lower class because of what i said earlier they're more likely to stay in these lower classes because they don't have the resources or the will to break out this also won't allow people to explore other opportunities such as the arts because now they're going to spend most of their time focusing on these higher classes, making students less likely to be able to like have a diverse range of subjects. Because now getting into these higher classes is what's most important because you're going to be actively compared to these students in these higher classes when you want to apply for things like university and stuff. This means you actually won't be able to choose what you actually want to do and instead will only be focusing in the education for the like course you get into for the marks you get into this course and not actually your learning as a whole which is not the point of the education system and we do not believe in education system where this happens where students join the course um, solely based on it being difficult is why people join it in the first place um so what are the impacts of this wait do i have enough time okay what are the impacts of this uh you get like students who all right, I'm done. 30 seconds. I'm so confused. I just decided to time. It's all good. Okay, I think that's speaking for that speech. <clears throat> just to be clear, I will also be timing your speech. The hand signals are as follows. So one tap means that the one minute mark has like ended for your speech. And then I will also tap the table once again when you reach the four minute mark. So these mark the end and beginning of protected times. And then after you reach the five minute mark, I will tap the table twice and then I would do a 15 second countdown. Okay, I call upon the second speaker on government side to provide his five minute address. Okay, five minutes. Um, 15 seconds in the Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. My time starts in my first word. Three, two, one. I've got inherently a few issues with the opposition side, inherently where they imply that lower level programs are going to be discriminated against only on our side of the house, and two, that they imply that our system does not necessarily only benefit, that our system benefits only the upper class. You get a couple issues with that. I'll tackle that first in my reputation. But before my reputation, I'm going to quickly go back my speech. One, where I'm going to be refuting. Two, where I'm going to be bringing up my exclusive point. And three, why our benefits actually outweigh what they, they're set to bring up. Let's move on to my reputation. They claim that our education, education system is quite discriminatory. One, it already happens in the status quo, as our POI points this out, where people are pay, where people pay, you know, tutors a ton to like move their son, like move their children further in like just a class. Like you can succeed in like one class, and two, where they say that oh, lower pro, low, lower level programs are going to be likely receiving less funding, especially as society progresses and need for high skilled jobs increase. The education system is likely incentivized to bring everyone to the same level anyway. This includes the lower class. Those at high levels inherently require less resources since they're inherently more talented. Those resources will nat naturally trickle down to those who are in a, like a lower class, right? It's also likely that the endpoint for these um, classes is the same, right? In countries where such an extensive education system is feasible, it is likely that these students from every level will end up in the end goal anyway. That's usually going to be university. Um, because this uh, education system is likely only feasible in countries where like education ac economies and like human rights are good enough for these extensive education systems to exist. Let's move on to my first point. Let's move on to my point about how benefits the academic staff and teachers. It's not just students uh, that need benefits, right? They're not the only actor in this debate that we need to tackle. If students ha are like have similar academic levels and learning abilities, like we described on our side, teachers have less workload and therefore less stress, incentivizing them to teach at a better level. This means that teachers can employ similar learning methods and learning materials for everyone to use in their class, therefore reducing overall workload. Right, what's the impact of this? Let's talk about why this matters. Especially in the status quo, where teachers are already overworked, underpaid, and do so much overtime, it is likely that they're already stressed and have low motivation to actually teach because they don't have like incentives for themselves first, right? In our world, it's likely that our students like in each class are more similar in like learning level and learning ability so that it's easier for students and teachers to deal with like students right and learning materials like tying into my partner's point about student efficiency like the, the impact of this is relatively intuitive right if teachers have are at lower stress levels 
they can likely teach more effectively. And if students learn better, it is likely that teachers have a more positive experience. This is like this benefits both sides of the house. Yeah, go ahead. Could you explain how this makes the teachers work at a less Okay, uh, that's what I'm actually going to be tackling like right now. Essentially, I what I'm saying is the impacts affect all major actors in this debate. But why is this that it makes teachers less stressed? If everyone is necessarily at the same level, if everyone can necessarily agree where one person doesn't fall back so hard that the teacher has to like do extra lessons every day to help that person, or if where one person like succeeds so far that the teacher basically doesn't have to care about them, it's likely that if the teacher only has to teach one strict curriculum, use one learning material for the entire class, it's likely that they're going to be less stressed because they have less overall workload. Now, why do these academic staff matter? A couple points. One, they provide learning material, and they're most likely the exclusive learning source in the status quo, right? What they bring to the table is experience, personalized guidance, and adaptability. This is compared to something like Khan Academy or getting like private, um, getting like online tutoring, which is like very hard to access for most people because it's hard to access personalized help from these people because one, like it's going to be like likely significantly delayed, or you're going to be stuck behind a paywall because you have to pay for Chegg to answer your questions, etc., etc., etc. Right? Two, academic staff are humans too. Like at the end of the day, their mental well-being matters, right? And that. It's not just the students that matter in this debate, like these teachers are also humans who actually matter because they're the ones actually providing academics like teaching. Like by creating a positive environment for them, mutual benefits are brought up both for the teachers and for the students. They're likely the only significant source of education in the status quo, bad working environments, poor school infrastructure, etc. lead to poor education like to lead to teachers walking out and quitting, et cetera, et cetera. If they're not treated well, it's likely that we'll lose a significant source of education. Now, why is it that our benefits are more impactful and better than opposition? One, we bring you practical benefits across the board where we recognize the needs of both teachers and students, where the status quo neglects both to an extent where both uh, um, actors like actively antagonize learning. This problem we can solve through a more positive personalized system, and even worst case, even if hate for learning exists on both sides of the house, we can at least provide better quality education. And where our principal benefit embodies the spirit of education, where we strive to personalize education for all, and where we provide that good quality education for all where we you know help everyone reach their end goal which is like probably university or something like that especially in canada where like you know we're so developed and i'm proud to propose i think that's speaker for that address and i call upon the second speaker from the opposition side to give her five minute address Speaker, sometimes we join classes not for the best reasons, and streaming only stresses out the students exponentially more, instead of helping. So in today's speech, I'm going to be first doing a refutation to everything you've heard from the government side, and then also incorporating the rebuilding to my partner's points inside my refutations, and then finally, I'm going to be highlighting to you the impacts, and also kind of doing an um, extension to my partner's case as well, to further out our case. So, number one, I'm going to do refutation. First, to the Prime Minister. There are two things that he talks about. Number one is that how different learning goals will be, lear learning needs will be fulfilled, and the second is more flexibility. So let's focus on the first one first. Different learning needs or different learning goals. In high school or even elementary school where this system is going to take place, what does that really look like? Is it truly students who feel it's extremely passionate about math, mathematics or like sciences that they would want to sacrifice hours and hours of their time into that course or is it more like parents who think that these are courses with better um job or careers in the future who push their children into these courses so what are these different learning needs or different learning goals are they truly authentic from the students themselves or are they coercion from the parents and once students are in these courses do they really feel the love for learning or do they feel pressure immense pressure from um from courses that they were not supposed to be in in the first place but forced on by their parents because of the existence of this streaming system and um, also enhanced by the promotion of it and how it exists in school rather than outside tutoring. Now, the second thing is that, again, as my partner has stated, things such as tutoring and things that you can get from with money exist outside of school, which will make these students go further in certain courses, right? If the system goes into school, then what is going to happen to those people who cannot afford tutoring? Because usually people get into these higher courses in school through tutoring outside. So therefore, the people who do not cannot afford these courses, who 
who might potentially want to join these courses or be um be accelerating are forced to go into a more dumbed down version of the course and interact with students who are also dumbed, dumbed down so called then and lose out on the opportunity to go into that stream as a whole because curriculums are set and built in a way that you learn like a year of content through a year and you don't like learn more than what you are supposed to learn now the second thing is more flexibility which is quite funny to us because they said that they would sort these students through a standardized standardized test in the beginning of the year which to us that does not seem flexible at all right what if you mess up on the first day of like the test and you get put into a course that does not uh, reflect your actual skill or you get put into a course that like reflects too much of your skill. Like you get put into a course that you do not want to be in. Um, yeah, so this is really bad for the students because it will, like, it's just not as good as giving them, keeping their choice open at, to a more general course. The next thing that's brought up by their um, second speaker is that teachers are going to be less stressed. However, we see that under our current system, teacher will still be teaching one curriculum for each class and students under their system will still be asking questions if they don't understand a concept. So it's really like um, unclear on how they will be less stressed if they're working under essentially the same environment and same pay. So I'm going to be next talking about I'm kind of like illustrating to you more of how this system is going, like how their system is going to not be beneficial for their, for the students. So we're going to sort this into three cases, essentially. Number one case is people who are put into the curriculums that are um, like that are kind of set to them, like the dumbed down version versus the accelerated version. So the teachers are slower and many students miss out their chance to be uh, to get into like an actual harder course because of whatever test that they have. Therefore, this, this, that sets their trajectory to that course, um, a version that is like so-called dumbed down, and they will never get the chance to move up because again, that's how a curriculum is set. You learn the grade nine material like in the grade nine year. You can't go in, like just go into the grade 10 year. The second um, case is that people who purposely get into a worse class because they feel, for example, stressed or, or like they feel scared about the course in that instance. That is, that is also really bad for the students themselves because um, it might not actually be what they are thinking in the future or it might not actually be um, where their dreams are at and they might not realize it. And finally, students who get put into the higher levels sometimes are forced or coerced into those courses and they're not actually courses that they are passionate for. So finally, our students are there's on, under the streaming system, students are sad, cannot find their passion, and are overly stressed. I'm so proud to of this. Okay, I thank the speakers for the round of debate. Can I call upon the reply speaker from side opposition? to give a two-minute address. The time will start in three, two, one. Uh, okay, so government brings us two main points. One, how it's better for students, as it like curates the class for each student, and the second one on how it's better for teachers. First off, we build. They like refute our point on equality by saying it happens on either side. However, their side actively perpetuates this by changing the standard by which each student is judged on. For example, harder classes are better for universities. And since like students, like as we proved earlier, with extra tutoring are more likely to get into these classes, they're more likely to be like recognized by universities. Universities and these lower classes have inadequate resources to compete with the higher classes, making like the average comparison after graduation worse for those who do not get into these higher classes. Um, now on to some refutation. So on their point on like the advancement of students, they say like on our side, uh, on their side like they don't put any like limits on students but we say like these students can take competitions outside of school they have many other resources and opportunities for them to prove themselves and their skills outside of the classroom we believe that the education system should be one where it's an equal playing field where there's adequate resources for those who deserve extra help and those who may be exceeding um, and there are opportunities already in status quo for people to do better for example math competitions they also say it's worse for teachers as now it's going to be harder 
harder for them to manage multiple like perspectives. You say it isn't like as extreme as they claim it is, and um like the ch change isn't as much. For example, in a harder class, the teacher has to work harder to challenge these students, and maybe a student in the harder class may be slightly better and barely get into the class, while there's also a student who's a prodigy in the class. So the comparison there is almost as equal on either side and in these lower classrooms there may be someone who doesn't understand anything whatsoever while there's someone who some like understands most of it but barely failed the task so we see on their side most of the impacts are minimal and on our side we already refuted all of their points yeah. i think that speaker for that reply and to conclude this debate i call upon the proposition reply speaker to give a two minute address Hello, at the top of my speech, I just want to point out how this motion was never never had the intent to solve the problem of wealth inequality. We understand that there are certain systematic barriers that are never able to allow those who are at a lower socioeconomic level to succeed and go above the people at a higher socioeconomic level. This looks like you're able to take the SAT, which costs money, multiple times. This looks like finding tutors or going to extracurriculars. This looks like going to private schools instead of public schools to get a better education. We recognize that these are problems in which either side of the house cannot solve with this, with this problem. So taking that into consideration, government's goal is to allow that even these students who are unable to succeed, who are struggling in class, to be able to get an education and at least go to university. Contrastingly to what they tell you, which is that these students are disencouraged to study, they're forced to stay another grade because they failed their test, and they're also judged by their peers. Okay, so what am I going to do then? Let's first just give a general idea on like, Let's just give a general idea of what our side of the house is and what our case is comparatively to what their side of the house is and why we're able to beat them. My first point was how we get better educational opportunities to, 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 to these students. The response to the opposition is that these students are going to be stigmatized, uh, stigmatized in these class because like, they're considered as being like failing in the class and etc. But to that we say the comparative is much worse. Comparatively under their side of the house, if a student is literally failing math class, he is forced to stay a grade. We show that they're much more stigmatized under their side of the house, rather under our side, at least he's still he's able to get the credit and he's still able to like complete the homework within the class. The second idea they give us is that the parents are going to be the ones to force these students to study. To that we say that they're already doing this. Tiger parents already exist. They can still spend like a large amounts of money and force the student to study a lot like a lot so that they can do better on the ICT or do better on like a certain math contest. Like that, that's the example they, they build us. We're telling the tiger parents are still going to exist, but at least under our side of the house, if the student is not, or if the student is underperforming, teachers can recommend, can, rec can recommend them to retake the test and go to a lower level. So ultimately, what do you ought to wait in this round? My partner Franklin tells you why we're better able to free up the stress of teachers because now they have to teach a single curriculum to students that are about at, this, uh, about, uh, at, at about equal level, and also we reduce the stress of students. On that basis, we're so proud to propose. I thank that speaker for that speech, and that concludes this round of debate.